In this presentation, I intend to discuss the Laplace transform of the Heaviside step function, and then to continue the idea to the idea of the Laplace transform of a piecewise defined function. When we say a function is piecewise, we mean that it has a different functional rule for different parts of its domain. The Heaviside step function itself is a piecewise function. It is zero to the left of some point, and then steps up to the value 1 at and to the right of that point. Here as a reminder I've drawn the graphs of h0 of t where the step is at t equals 0 and h a of t where the step is at h equals a. You can check that the rules I've written down for the function correspond to the graphs shown. Let's immediately look at the Laplace transform of h a of t. We write down the definition in the usual way with the exponential of negative st. s is automatically taken to be positive and I'm also going to assume for simplicity that a is positive so that the step occurs to the right of the y-axis. Now let's think about the integration range. When we start at 0, h a of t is 0 until we reach the point a along the axis. We therefore don't get any contribution to the integral until we reach the value a. So we could rewrite it with lower limit a and upper limit the infinity symbol. But now, once we reach a and go beyond a, h a of t has value 1. So we simply have to do the integral a to infinity of 1 e to the negative st dt. If we do the anti-differentiation, that's quite trivial, and we put in the integration limits. Remembering that s is positive, as t gets very large, the exponential fades away to nothing. It has limit 0. Since the a is a bottom limit on the integration, then we need an extra negative sign, and we end up with 1 over s e to the minus a s. It's worth noting what happens in the special case when a is 0. Then we get the Laplace transform of h 0 of t, but e to the 0 is 1, so we just get 1 over s. That shouldn't be surprising because after all h 0 of t is simply the function 1 all the way along the positive axis. So what we've done here is effectively found the Laplace transform of 1 which we already know to be 1 over s. So there's a self-consistency about the Laplace transform of the step function. I next want to introduce the second shift theorem. I'm not going to prove this theorem but simply tell you what it says. It says that if the Laplace transform of a function f of t is capital F of s, then the transform of f of t minus a multiplied by the step h a of t is e to the minus a s times f of s. As an example, we could look at the plus transform of t minus 4 squared h4 of t. We know that the Laplace transform of t squared is 2 over s cubed and the effect of the shift simply adds the exponential factor on with a equal to 4. Notice that it was crucial here that we saw t minus 4 and h4 of t. Those numbers had to be the same. The question arises, what if they were not the same? Suppose we had t squared times h4 of t, for instance. Well, we'll do an example like this, but instead of using t squared, we'll use t, just for the moment at least, to keep the algebra simpler. I'm going to ask the question, what is the Laplace transform of t h4 of t? 
Let's write down some of the transforms that we already know. We know that L of t is 1 over s squared. We know that L of h4 of t is e to the minus 4s over s. And the second shift theorem tells us that L of t minus 4 times h4 of t must be e to the minus 4s over s squared. None of those re three results is exactly the one we want, but we can construct the one we want from them. I'm going to write t h4 of t, the function we're interested in. I need to see t minus 4 there, so let's write it there t minus 4, but that's now not quite right because we've only got t, not t minus 4, so let's add the 4 back on. That's certainly a true statement that I've written, but now we can see two separate parts and we know the Laplace transform of each. So we can say the Laplace transform of t h4 of t is the same as the transform of t minus 4 times h4 plus the transform of 4 times h4. The first of these is written down immediately using the second shift theorem e to the minus 4s over s squared and the second is just 4 times the transform of h4. So it's 4 e to the minus 4s over s. We've now achieved the transform we wanted. I'll now conclude this presentation by doing a slightly more involved transform. It'll involve the same kind of processes, it's just a little bit longer. I'm going to try and find the Laplace transform of the function t squared plus 2t minus 1 times h3 of t. The problem here is reconstructing the quadratic t squared plus 2t minus 1 all in terms of t minus 3's instead. The easiest way to do this is to say let a new variable, call it u, be t minus 3. It's u that we would like to see the quadratic expanded in. If u is t minus 3, then t must be u plus 3. So we can rewrite t squared plus 2t minus 1 is equivalent to u plus 3 squared plus 2 into u plus 3 minus 1. We now expand out all the brackets in this expression to give u squared plus 6u plus 9 plus 2u plus 6 minus 1 and collect terms to get u squared plus 8u plus 14. Now we can rewrite the expression replacing u with t minus 3. This expression is equivalent to our original t squared plus 2t minus 1 but it's written in terms of powers of t minus 3 instead which is exactly what we need when the h3 of t is multiplying it on the end. We can now take the Laplace transform of this and be confident that it is the same as the Laplace transform of our original function. So all of this was multiplied by h3 of t. The second shift theorem tells us how to do this. Furthermore, since every term has h3 of t multiplying it, that means that e to the minus 3s will be a factor overall. To fill in the brackets, what we now need to do is take the Laplace transform of t squared, which is 2 over s cubed, and of 8t, which gives 8 over s squared, 
and of 14 times 1, the Laplace transform of 1 is 1 over s. So 14 over s. This is the result we were seeking, and this concludes my presentation.